Is it safe to have surgery during COVID-19 pre-vaccine? My answer is absolutely. And we are gonna talk about why today on PACU Nursing Minutes. We are prepared, we are here for you, we're ready to serve you. And I don't want you waiting and delaying that surgery um, because the longer you wait, the more complications can occur. And I have seen it, people who've had cancer, um, patients who come in with bone on bone and they need their joints replaced, um, uh, horrible bowel obstructions, um, you know, Surgery is so severe, I mean, like ruptured gallbladders because people just were sitting on the pain for so long and waiting to come in. So I just wanna share with you what we are doing to stay safe. When you are about to have surgery and you've decided you can't wait any longer, um, you will need to do a two week quarantine at home. And then about one to three days before the surgery, you need to have a COVID-19 test and it needs to be negative. And then you need to remain in self-quarantine at your home, post your test. Uh, you will do a telehealth, uh, telephone conferences with your surgeon, your anesthesiologist and your pre-op nurse to do your pre-op screening. Then the day of surgery, you will arrive to the hospital and um, masks will be required to enter the hospital. Hospitals are required to have checkpoints upon entry so that you will have your temperature screened, uh, COVID symptom screening, and then they will provide you a medical mask uh, to replace your cloth mask. Once you have gone through your screening, then you can head over towards admitting and then admitting will move you forward into the surgical process and get you up to pre-op. Uh, in pre-op there, you'll remain with your mask on and they will um, bring you into a patient room. Usually once you're in your patient room, they will allow you to take your mask off if you like, as long as you're not sharing space with another patient. And then from there, you'll go to the OR, emergent case. Let's say you were trauma and you were in a car accident or um, you had some kind of accident and it's requiring you to have surgical intervention. Then upon arrival to the ER, they will do um, COVID symptom screening. If they deem that you do need to have surgery, then you will have a nasal swab. Um, so they will you know, do a temperature check, travel check, ask you if you've been exposed to anyone who's had COVID-19 and were asked to self-quarantine. Um, and then they'll you know, screen you for a cough, pneumonia, headache, uh, recent diarrhea, uh, fatigue, shortness of breath, sore throat, migraines, coughing up blood, any pulmonary symptoms. Then uh, if you are COVID positive, they will um, place you in a pa patient private room and close the door. Or if you have symptoms, they will do that if they suspect that you may be COVID positive. Um, and at that point, they will implement droplet um, and contact precautions for that patient based on the CDC guidelines. Once we do deem that uh, you've been seen by the surgeon and that surgery is warranted, then um, upon uh, the uh, airborne droplets, which is the intubation phase, uh, the OR team will implement airborne precautions, which requires an N95 face mask with another mask over top of that. Um, eye protection, either a face shield or goggles, or um, the team may utilize the CAPR system. Um, and then along with um, gowns, surgical gowns, bunny suits. And then once you are all done your surgery, you will be either recovered in the OR, extubated in the OR, so that they can maintain that airborne exposure to that one room, or some hospitals, um, like where I worked, have um, implemented a negative pressure room. That's where we would do extubation if it was not already done in the OR. And then once we were, the patient was fully recovered, then they would be moved to the COVID unit, um, utilizing uh, droplet precautions in the hallway, which means masking the patient. Airborne precautions, what we do in the OR and in the PACU, because we're gonna be um, intubating, uh, putting an artificial airway into um, their trachea and to ventilate them during the surgery. So uh, this is me in a capper. And um, I must say, 
I love the capper. Uh, I wore a popper back in the day, taking care of TB patients. And um, the battery is heavy. You get hot and sweaty. And the capper is just fantastic. You have this airflow across your face and um, you feel like you're getting extra air. Uh, it keeps you a little bit cooler. It's not super heavy. Um, you can see by the lights on the top how long your battery pack's going to last. Um, and so I say the Capper Maxi Air System rocks and I am not sponsored by anyone for this channel. But I will say as a nurse, I will always opt for the capper system over an N95, hands down. The hardest thing is that it's very hard to communicate. Um, so we've utilized walkie talkies when we're in the negative pressure room. Um, I know some hospitals have implemented intercom systems. Um, and then we've also even used our dry erase on the clear glass when we're you know, asking our coworker to go get us whatever it is that we may need um, while we're in that negative pressure room. Now, if your patient is COVID negative, yay, they get to proceed as a normal patient um, utilizing standard precautions. And our standard precautions are hand washing, um, uh, face masks, and gloves whenever you're going to come in contact, uh, and face shield with body fluids. So they're going to go to the pre-op department and the OR team will see them um, there for the pre-op check. Uh, no isolation is required. Again, standard precautions is utilized. And then um, after your surgery is all done and you are out of the PACU and in a private patient room, you may take your face mask off. So standard precautions, just for those of you who aren't familiar with it, we'll just do a quick review. Just remember, everyone wash up, everyone mask up. And um, we also are wearing uh, eye protection. Safety goggles that wrap around that give you coverage um, from the top, the sides, and the bottom um, are recommended. And if you don't have goggles that do that, then a full face shield over top of your glasses is what is recommended. So recovering from your surgery at home during COVID. Remember, standard precautions, standard precautions, wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Um, you'll wanna restrict visitors to your home, to your immediate family for the at least the first two weeks so that you don't um, potentially come in contact with someone and, and, and get compromised. And then remember just to stay healthy, have rest, de-stress. Um, spiritual health is very, very, very important. So um, I highly encourage um, you to uh, promote spiritual health, emotional health, and then um, just, you know, take care of yourself. This is your recovery time. And the better you recover, the better the surgery outcomes are. Um, we don't want you cutting it short. Uh, these are really um, unique times that we're living in. And so you need to treat yourself well and take that time. References, uh, I pulled this from this, uh, the CDC guidelines for healthcare professionals. And if you'd like to learn more, uh, please go to the website below. Uh, they elaborate significantly more for healthcare professionals. Packy Nursing Minutes is for knowledge sharing and for entertainment purposes. I recommend that you always follow your hospital's policy procedures, your physician's orders, Nurse Practice Act. If you feel that this video gave you value added, please, please subscribe and like it. And then leave your comments below. I wanna hear, what are you doing? Do you have the cappers available? Um, uh, what do you think of the N95s? How is your PPE holding up in your hospital? Um, I just would love to hear from you and find out how you are staying safe during COVID-19. I wish you all wellness and health. Thank you for tuning in to PACU Nursing Minutes.